this is the work of someone listening. so glad you decided to join us today. Let us go into the sanctuary.
Come on, let's give the Lord a hand praise. Yes, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. I am so thankful and so grateful to be able to come to you on this day. Can we just give the Lord another hand praise for just giving us yet another opportunity to come and stand in his divine presence? I won't just take this opportunity and give our president elect and our vice president elect Biden and Harris a hand praise for their victory and to all of those elected officials who will serve we ask that you would pray for them and we ask that you would pray for our nation and for all of our municipalities um, that govern us and we need you to pray that our nation will be unified and that we shall come together I want to invite you right now that on next Sunday we're going to be celebrating 30 years in ministry. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand praise. And uh, I don't necessarily want you to celebrate me. I want you to celebrate the God who has sustained us to be together for so many years and 30 years in ministry. The Lord has kept me. It's not always been easy, but God has sustained and kept me. And I want you to join us on next Sunday for our 30th ministerial anniversary and and certainly we'll have a great time in the Lord I want you to turn your Bibles with me to first Samuel the 24th chapter the 10th verse and it merely reads these words behold this day thine eyes have seen how the Lord had delivered thee in the day into mine hand in the cave and some bade me to kill you but mine I spared thee and I said I will not put forth mine hand against my Lord for he is the Lord's anointed I, I, I want to just talk for a few moments today from this subject I'm not going to do to you um, like you have done to me I, I just want to talk about that for just a few moments I'm not going to do to you what you have done to me that's what it is I'm not going to do to you what you have done to me uh, one of the greatest temptations that you will ever face in this life uh, is the the urge or the urges uh, of the temptations of anger and revenge I don't know what it is about us that makes us want to do to others what others have done to us and there is an element uh, if I had to speak truth to you today there's an element within all of us that makes us want to pay people back uh, there's a payback uh, element in all of us anger and revenge are cousins uh, they grew up in the same house and one raised the other from time to time perhaps this is why Frederick Brutner declared that of the seven deadliest sins that anger is probably the most fun to smack your lips to lick your wounds over grievances long past to savor to the last two some morsel of both the pain you're given and the pain you're giving back he says, in many ways, it is as a feast that is set up for a king. But the skeleton at the feast is not somebody else. But oftentimes, the skeleton at the feast is you. In other words, all of us have to deal with the temptations of anger and revenge. Uh, revenge, someone said, is an act of turning anger in on yourself. Uh, this became a reality for me when I came up in grade school and high school and even college playing football. And i never forget that in college I got hurt when we were at practice preparing to play one of our rivalry teams. And in practice one of my own teammates hit me when I was not looking. And I remember going back to the huddle and I was de de decreeing and declaring and I had made up in my mind that I was going to get him back I was going to pay him back for hitting me that way but then when I lined up and I knew exactly how I was going to hit him I knew 
the way I was going to hit him would really injure him pretty badly. But when I got to the line, something occurred to me that if I hit him, I would be hitting my own teammate. And I would take my very own out and I would hurt someone that we would need in Saturday's game. What I'm trying to tell you is that revenge is often an act turning anger in on yourself. And that when you take revenge on somebody else, you're not just hurting the other person, but you're also hurting yourself. But if you really want to get revenge on someone, note that the best revenge is not to be like the one who has injured you. Uh, somebody said that the best revenge is not to be like your enemy. I wish I had some help in here. Gandhi says uh, that revenge is not good because an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth will just leave the world blind and toothless. Uh, the Bible says that if we're ever overtaken with revenge, the Bible says that we ought to put it in check. Um, because the Bible declares that we should not repay evil for evil or insult with insult but rather we should repay evil with blessing because in blessing you also inherit a blessing in other words you ought to put in the comment box that you are not going to mess up my blessing by trying to get me to do evil towards you I wish I had some help in here in other words the way I get blessed is by doing good to you when you do evil to me and that's what we find here in the text in this sermon we find a place where that becomes real and a reality what I'm trying to tell you is that you can't live your life trying to get revenge on somebody else that's what president elect showed us this past week when we when he had the privilege and the right and the opportunity to do to Donald Trump what Donald Trump had done to him uh, because during his press conference instead of calling him names, instead of bullying him and branding him, instead of insulting him, uh, instead of doing uh, to Trump what Trump had done to him uh, you, if you watch the press conference uh, Joseph Biden just stayed cool and he stayed calm and he declared that at the right time Trump will leave the White how somebody ought to say amen and that's what we find here in this text we find a place where if you just stay faithful to your call God has a way of giving you the victory that's what's here in the text because we find a place where David had a chance of getting revenge on a man by the name of Saul don't you know it all happened when David got word that it was a giant by the name of Goliath who was looking for someone one who contend who would contend against him don't you know that they were trying to find someone to fight against Goliath and everybody was afraid to stand against this giant and then here comes this little shepherd boy by the name of David who had no fear standing against this giant by the name of Goliath don't you know that when David stood to uh, to stand to fight against Goliath Goliath, it was Saul who decided that if you're going to fight this giant Goliath, I must put my own armor on you. You cannot fight him in your own gear. Uh, David, if you're going to fight him, I need you to fight him in my own armor. But don't you know that David declared that I cannot fight this giant in your armor. I can't fight him with your sword. I cannot fight him with your shield. I got to fight him in my own gear, in my own skin with my own faith can I tell you that there are some fights in your life I wish I had some help that you cannot fight with other people's identity but you got to learn how to fight in your own skin in your own spear in your own faith realm I wish I had some help in here what I'm trying to tell you 
is that there is nothing like having somebody who's comfortable in their own skin. I don't have time to try to be like somebody else because I'm busy trying to be like who I am. Do I have anybody this morning who's so thankful that God made you the way you are? Your hair may not be as pretty as somebody else's hair. You may not be as small as somebody else is. You may not have as much money as somebody else may have. You may not drive the car that somebody else may drive. But aren't you glad that God made you the way you are? I don't know about you, but I'm so glad that the Lord made me. He made me and shaped me. And I'm wonderfully and beautifully made in the image of God. I wish you would just put it in the comment box and tell somebody I ain't trying to be like you. But I'm so glad that the Lord made me. And I feel good about who I am. If I'm going to fight my enemies, I can't fight them the way you fight them. I got to fight them the way I fight them. If I'm going to fight my condition, I can't fight my condition like you would fight my condition. I got to fight my condition the way I fight my condition. If I'm going to fight what's coming at me, I can't fight it like you would fight it. I got to fight it the way I fight it. Because if I fight it like you would fight it, I might be cursing. I might be fighting with my fist. I might be kicking with my feet. But if I fight it the way I fight it, I know how to get on my knees and pray. I know how to call on God. I know how to get angels dispatched on my behalf. Anybody here thank God that you know how to fight a fight that other people may not know how to fight. You know how to go into warfare. You know how to get in touch with the heavenly realm. Anybody here know how to go to war and fight on your behalf? So it was David who took five smooth stones. I wish I had some help, y'all. And don't you know, he took five smooth stones and a slingshot and stood up against this giant by the name of Goliath. And after slaying, and don't you know that after he the fight got started, the Bible declares that, that David took this one stone. And don't you know, he shot this one stone. And it hit the giant in the head. And he slayed the giant with one smooth stone. And don't you know that after David killed this giant, don't you know that the giant fell and he fell fell down and David won that fight. What I'm trying to tell you is that I don't know what giant you're facing today, but I'm so glad to know that giants do fall. I wish I had some hip in here. I know that somebody's facing a giant in your home, a giant on your job. Just the other day, we had a giant in our nation, but I'm so glad that giants do fall. And don't you know that David stood over the giant and don't you know he took a sword and cut the giant's head off. And don't you know that after David won this battle, the Bible declares that the women got together. The women got together. The women got together and they made up a praise team and they had one song that they sang. Everywhere they went, they kept singing this one song and the song they sang was that Saul has killed his thousand, but David has killed his ten thousand. What I'm trying and tell y'all is that, that after David won this battle after David won and defeated this giant Goliath don't you know that, that Saul heard the women singing the praises of David and jealousy and envy and resentment set into the heart of King Saul. I wish I had some help. Don't you know that, that Saul set out to kill David five times. He tried to kill David five times. I'm going somewhere. He tried to kill David five times and, and don't you know twice he tried to kill him while he was just playing his harp. And while he was playing his harp, it was twice that he tried to kill him with his own spear. And then he tried to kill him when he sent him to war to fight against the Philistines and he had it set for David to die in the war. But when David got Got to the war. David had so much strength and so much might and he relied so much on the power of God that when David got the war instead of them killing him David ended up killing them. What I'm trying to tell y'all is that what the devil meant for evil God intended for good. 
I wish you would just put that in the comment box or tap somebody wherever you go and tell them that I'm still alive today because whatever the devil meant for evil God intended for good what I'm trying to tell y'all is that God is a master in turning things around he's a master in turning your situation around that when they dig one ditch I wish I had some help in here they better dig too because the God that you serve knows how to protect you and don't you know he tried to kill he tried to kill David he tried to kill David when he sent David um, he sent David to the war but then he tried to kill David with the spear he shot a spear at him but somehow David kept dodging he kept dodging death he kept he kept sidestepping death and don't you know that Saul could not kill David he kept sidestepping death because David had the Lord on his side and I want to tell somebody that when you got God on your side when death comes this way God will tell you to move this way when death comes this way God will tell you to move this way when trouble will come this way God will tell you to dodge this way what I'm trying to tell you is that when you walk with the Lord the Lord knows how to protect his children anybody here know that God is a protector and don't you know that David David his life was on the line but then here it is that David is in a fight for his life and don't you know as a matter of fact his best friend David Jonathan uh, Jonathan came and said David I know that my father Saul is trying to kill you and you don't have to worry about my daddy because I will let you know when my daddy is serious about killing you but then David says to Jonathan who is Saul's son he says I got enough sense to know that when there is a step between me and them but David was determined that he was not going, going to die at that moment but then watch how God fixes this y'all because church it was that when when David was in flight for his life Saul was after him and it was that when Saul was after him that Saul hid one day or went into a cave one day to use the bathroom and don't you know that David saw when Saul entered into the cave to use the bathroom and while Saul this is sort of a hilarious story while Saul is using the bathroom while trying to find David to keep him while Saul is using the bathroom David comes behind Saul watch this and cuts the robe uh, of Saul's robe and cuts a piece of cloth off and then puts the cloth in his pocket what I'm trying to tell you is that while Saul was trying to kill David David had a chance to kill Saul but instead of killing him he cuts a piece of cloth off and puts it in his pocket and then waits for Saul to come outside of the cave. When Saul comes outside of the cave he calls Saul and Saul sees David and then Saul says to David, Saul says uh, to David, David what are you doing here? I'm looking for you and I'm about to kill you. But then David says, Saul you don't have to kill me because I could have killed you. As a matter of fact I got so close to you that I have cut a piece I have cut a piece of your robe off I have a piece of cloth in my hand that belongs to you that's just how close I have come to kill you and don't you know that it was that when Saul saw that it was David who could have killed him help me Holy Ghost that Saul recognized that David was the next king of Israel what I'm trying I tell you is that the reason that David does not kill Saul is because David had made up in his mind that I'm not going to do to you what you have done to me what I'm trying to tell you is that that's a constitution that all of us must live by we got to get to that place where we don't live with revenge we don't live with trying to get people back that have done us wrong we got to get to that place where we don't live with payback we got to get to that place where we say I'm not going to do to you what you have done to me well why did not David 
killed Saul? That's the existential question. That is the essential question. Why didn't David kill Saul? Well, let's look at it and then I'm going to be done. I want you to know that the reason that David does not kill Saul is because David understood that to kill Saul would also mean that he would kill his own destiny because David was to be the next king of Israel. It was promised to him and because it was promised to him he didn't have to kill him to promote himself. I wish I had some help and what I'm trying to tell you is that a promise is like an engagement ring uh, uh, and on, on a bride's uh, finger that is soon to be married. What I'm trying to tell you is that the ring is a sign that the wedding is on the way. It has not yet happened, but when you see the engagement ring, you know that the wedding is on the way. You can go ahead and pick out the gown. You can go ahead and pick out the cake. You can go ahead and pick out the venue because the wedding is on the way. And I want to tell somebody that that's what a promise is. A promise is the right for you to have an expectation. And when you have an expectation, you don't have to walk around with revenge in your heart because a promise rests over your head. A promise rests over your life. A promise says that yea though I walk through the valley and the shadows of death I shall fear no evil for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff shall comfort me. A promise would say that a thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy right hand but none shall come now thee. A promise says in the midst of a pandemic that my God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches in glory. I wish I had some help in here. A promise will say to you that though I go through the fire and through the flood, my God will always bring me out into a wealthy place. I wish somebody would tap into the comment box and tell somebody I've been through some stuff, but God keeps on bringing me out into a wealthy place. I wish I had some help in here. What I'm trying to tell you is that you don't have to live a life of revenge because you have a life of promise. Somebody said that being revengeful is like drinking rat poison and then waiting on the rat to die. I wish I had some help in here. Because as you are revengeful, you're killing yourself and the rat will keep on living. But you got to be determined that you're going to live. So you got to let some stuff go. Because Jesus said that I come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Would you please tap somebody and tell them I want abundant life. I'm, I'm tired of living low life and I want abundant life but then church but then David does not kill Saul because he understood that Saul was a part of a larger system uh-huh it has it has to be such that if he had killed Saul then don't you know that all of the soldiers and all of his army would have come after David what I'm trying to tell you is that the reason that he doesn't kill Saul is because he understood that I might win the battle, but I may lose the war. Do I have a witness in here? And church, you need to know that there are times where you might win the battle, but you might lose the war. So you got to learn how to be strategic and understand church that some battles ain't worth it that's why church after 30 years i learned early that the old preachers used to tell us when we were young that if you're gonna pastor a church you got to learn that some battles are not worth fighting do i have a witness in here they got to know what to fight and know what to look over. Do I have a witness in here? What well, church, when you live a life of revenge, of, of revenge, you might win battles. You might tell a bigger lie. 
during an argument you might scream a little louder you might punch a little harder or you might win the battle but church you might also lose the war do I have a witness in here let me see if I can help it live more Trump won more states do I have a witness in here it looked like he won the battle but he lost the war because don't you know church that a battle doesn't mean you win the war do I have a witness in here a war is made up of many little battles but you're not after the battle you want to win the war and in this life you'll fight many battles do I have a witness in this life you might have a battle in your family a battle with your children a battle on your job a battle with your health a battle in your finances a battle in your mind a battle in your spirit in this life you may have to fight some battles but I want you to know that you gotta keep on fighting but in the end if you keep the faith you might lose some battles but in the end you'll win the war and you'll declare that I still have victory that's an oxymoron I might lose some battles but I still have victory it looks like I'm losing on this side but I'm winning on this side it might look I'm going like I'm going down on this side but I'm coming up on this side would you do me a favor and tap somebody and say neighbor it might look like I'm losing but I'm still winning because church you can't can't fight racism with racism you can't fight poverty with poverty you can't fight evil with evil but if you're going to dispel the power of darkness if you're going to get revenge on the hand of the enemy you must use the weapons that are mightier then the carnal, for the Bible says, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but are mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds. Do I have a witness in here? You ought to reach over your head and with power, you ought to destroy some arguments with power. You ought to pull down some power and destroy some conflicts. You ought to pull down some power and destroy some confusion in your life. You ought to pull down some strength and destroy some separation that's trying to come between you and somebody else I wish I had somebody who would declare this morning that we got victory we got power because we're able to pull down strength we're able to pull down power we're able to pull down uh, what we need uh, from on high say yeah say yeah but then David didn't kill Saul uh, because church he had a relationship with Saul's son do I have a witness in here he did not pull he did not kill Saul uh, because he had a relationship with his son by the name of Jonathan I'm about to go in now but don't you know that David did not get revenge because he had a relationship with Saul's son and his son was named Jonathan do I have a witness in here now some tried to insert that this relationship was of some erotic nature but church there is nothing to suggest that Jonathan and David had anything funny going on must I preach anyhow but church there are times when brothers 
got to get together and have a real bromance. Do I have a witness in here? That's the problem. We got too many brothers that's fighting brothers, that's killing brothers, that's after each other. Brothers, we got to stop killing each other. You got to see that you're not my enemy and I'm not your enemy. But you ought to see after the past four years, there's an enemy that's bigger than us. Do I have a witness in here? But church, David did not uh -huh, kill Saul because he had a relationship with Saul's son. I'm going somewhere. And don't you know that when I think about it, that's the only reason that I did not get revenge on some people who did me wrong because I got a relationship with another son. Do I have a witness in here? And that son is not Jonathan, but that son, his name is Jesus. Do I have a witness? But church, Eric Mason, in his book, The Woke Church, he talks about how black people got to exist with two consciousness. He draws on W.E.B. Du Bois, his mindset, when Du Bois says that we exist with two consciousness. We got a consciousness that we exist in the white world, but then we have a consciousness that we exist with in the black world. And don't you know that as African Americans, sometimes our consciousness, we got to learn how to survive in a white culture, but then church, we are double conscious because we got to learn how to survive in the hood. And don't you know we exist with double consciousness? Do I have a witness in here? And that's why I know how to survive over here. And I know how to survive over here. But then church, Eric Mason says not only are we double conscious, but we got a third consciousness, a third consciousness called the Christ consciousness. And this Christ consciousness take our double consciousness and transforms it with the power of mercy and the power of love and the power of forgiveness. Good God Almighty, and don't you know that the only reason that I have not gotten back revenge on some people while in my white consciousness is because of my third consciousness. And the only reason that I have not gotten back some revenge on some people while in my black consciousness is because of my third consciousness. Do I have a witness in here? And you ought to be glad that this third consciousness, it keeps me, it holds me. Because if it had not been for my Christ consciousness, I would have smacked somebody. Do I have a witness in here? I would have cursed somebody. Do I have a witness in here? I would have hit somebody. Do I have a witness in here? I would have kicked somebody. But I'm so glad that because of Jesus, he holds me, he rocks me, he takes care of me, he protects me, he controls me, he guides me. I thank God for the son that I'm not going to do to you what you've done to me. You talked about me, but I ain't going to talk about you. You tried to hurt me, but I ain't going to hurt you. You tried to stab me in my back, but I ain't going to stab you. You tried to kill my name, but I ain't going to kill you. You tried to stump on me. You tried to bury me. You tried to destroy me. But I'm so glad, like Jesus, on the third day, every time I rise,
says I get up with new power with new joy with new strength yeah 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 that's my story you ought to tell your story put in the comment box and tell somebody everything they tried it didn't work everything they did it didn't survive every lie they told it didn't live every trap they said it failed you ought to praise God because God is still in control I'm not gonna do to you what you've done to me I'm not gonna hurt you like you've hurt me I'm not gonna curse you like you've cursed me I'm not gonna try to dig a ditch for you like you've dug one for me what great example is Joseph Biden setting for us he's not calling him names he's not bullying he's not labeling and branding and picking on his dysfunctions he stand focused he's saying to the world I'm not gonna do to him what he's done for me and that's an example for all of us to take these are hostile times and some people are gonna try you because they didn't win some people are gonna test you because they lost but I want you to not live with revenge in your heart I want you to walk with the assurance that I'm not gonna do to them what they did to me listen if I'm talking to you today and if you have been living with revenge I'm gonna pray a prayer a release for you right now if you're holding a grudge against your husband against your wife against your co-worker against that family member that won't pay you that money back <laughs> I, I'm, I'm gonna pray that you don't do to them what they've done to you father in the name of Jesus I pray release right now in that spirit God I pray that you would help them to know that you have promised them a greater destiny and they can live in you and that you have better for them tomorrow than what they've seen yesterday in the name of Jesus we thank you for release now and we count it all joy in Jesus name amen listen do me a favor if you want to accept Christ as your Savior contact us at the address below we want to have you as a virtual member of our church you can go out there on our website and fill out that connect card so we can stay in contact with you. Also, if you'd like to give a donation to our ministry, we have people that's given to this ministry from all over the nation. You can sow a seed into this ministry. Why don't you give to us and let us continue to be a blessing to you. God bless you and don't forget to join us next Sunday for our 30th ministerial special worship service invite your family and friends it's going to be powerful we're going to have guest speakers and guest psalmists and dancers and and um host to come and lead us in worship and praise and you don't want to miss it and we're looking for a great time god bless you and thank you for joining us today thank you for being a part of us
First of all, we want to thank you so much for your generous support so that we can continue to operate in excellence. The following are ways to give tithes and offerings using technology. Use the Push Pay app or go to giving page on the Union Baptist website. Use the Cash app, which is dollar sign UBC 1200 trade. Use the Givelify app, Union Baptist Church, Winston-Salem. For Rise Up Giving, please use the designated cash app. Dollar sign, Union Baptist, Rise Up. If you don't use technology for giving, you may bring your tithes, offering, and Rise Up campaign payments on Sundays from 10 a.m. till noon. Envelopes will be available. Or you can mail checks only. No cash. Only checks to 1200 North Trade Street, Winston-Salem, North Carolina, 27101. Stay engaged. Join us for our weekly Zoom Connect programs. Each day, there is a way for you to engage with your Union Baptist Church family. Mondays, join Coffee and Connect Bible Study. Tuesdays, it's Men's and Women's Fellowship. Connect with your brothers and sisters for a topical discussion on relevant issues. Wednesdays, it's all about the youth, beginning at 7.30 p.m. Special Zoom sessions for nursery through high school. Thursdays, it's Breaking Bread with Bishop Mack, a Bible study addressing timely challenges from a biblical perspective. Thursdays at 8.30 p.m., it's Kaya, the networking and empowerment session for all young adults and young professionals. Fridays, get moving with Lady Kim on Fitness Friday. The exercise video can be viewed on the Union Baptist website or Facebook page any time of the day beginning at 6.30 a.m. On the weekends, connect with Saturday Phone Line Worship. Saturday, C2C Remix Motivational Services. Saturday Connect Worship Services, Sunday School Phone Line, Sunday Worship Services Phone Line, and Online. Don't forget to call in each Saturday for our church chat with Bishop at 7 p.m. These calls are important for information about the ministry. Please visit the website for dates, times, and Zoom ID numbers for all these Connect services. And don't forget to stay safe. Wash those hands frequently. Avoid large crowds over the size of 10. Cover coughs and sneezes. Stay at home when you're sick. Don't hoard the food. The supply chain is fine right now. Have a blessed week.